Welcome to Campfire Chronicles, episode number seven. I am Robbie, and this is Andrew, and we are back. And we've just released our latest episode for patrons. If you want to watch it early, and by early I mean right now, go to patreon.com slash adventure, donate a measly $2, and you can watch it. Otherwise, the public release will be April 17th. We think it's one of our best episodes yet. Yeah, I mean, we just went to Yosemite, and this was in Ohio, but I don't think that matters, because it's the like it's such an amazing adventure and yeah I don't know, and it's one of the most not to yeah. give too much away but that was kind of uh the theme of the episode was that it doesn't really matter where you go it's just that as long as you go then you can have an experience that you will enjoy you know yeah so why don't we talk a little bit about the editing process because we just spent the entire weekend editing that video yeah we uh we did another one of our little editing marathons you came over and i don't know it's like you were commenting on your vlog how um it is ironic that we spend so much time indoors doing a video on the outdoors and somebody actually asked us that during our live hangout that we did this past weekend and they were like what do you think about the fact that when you go out there oh yeah you have to spend so much time filming Mm -hmm. and you don't you kind of like lose the moment and my answer to that was that just it's worth it because it helps other people get to live it vicariously and there's it's almost like there's a different appeal to it as well yeah and we've actually gotten like lots of messages recently about how we've inspired people to go out or we've helped them in hard times of their life and i'm just like i i never imagined our channel would have that effect but it's really amazing that it has at least for some people yeah and you know it's also interesting because we just passed ten thousand subscribers and we just passed eleven thousand. yeah that's like that's pretty amazing <laughs> considering like, like a year ago we were at like what 3000 or something at most. I don't know, but I mean, it's just, it's so funny to think about that. We just started out doing something that we like doing and you know, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how everyone thinks it's unrealistic to be able to do a mm. job that you like doing. I mean, we don't get paid for this. Not yet. Anyway. Um, I mean, we're not making any money off of it. That is. To say. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> Everyone always thinks it's super unrealistic to do the things that you really want to do. But I I just don't think that's the case. I just think lots of times is the things that you think that you want to do, you don't actually want to do them as badly as like, you don't, Mm -hmm. you're not willing to put in the super hard work for it. Like Mm -hmm. for instance, I would love to be a male model who just stands there and gets his picture taken on magazines (laughs) and stuff, but I'm willing to put in zero effort towards that, (laughs) right? (laughs) But like yeah, something yeah. like Adventure Archives, it's like we spend hours and hours and hours editing, shooting, making music, doing all this stuff, but we love doing it, you know? Yeah, it's funny how um, we always have this idea that people don't want to work, but then you have crazy people like us who are putting in like 72 hours of editing straight, more or less. And then you realize that like we have this misunderstanding of what people want to do. Like people want to work, if they just want to produce things that they think are meaningful you know yeah you know it's really problematic because i think the thing that people always bring up when you say something like everybody should pursue what their interests and their dreams are Mm -hmm. is you get the classic examples like okay who's going to take out the trash or who's Mm going to do with waste disposal who's going to do the sewer system yeah and do all those things and i've got two answers for that and okay, I, I've got answers too. Let you go first. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, my answer is first of all, like everyone can pitch in a little bit. Like, I mean, you'd have to rearrange how things work, but everyone could pitch in a little bit so that nobody has to do it all day, all, like all their life. But second of all, there are people who like doing that. Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's similar to my answer. So part of my answer is that th- I guarantee you there are people who would find it thrilling. I'm not, I'm not even talking about like who would just be willing to do it. They mm-hmm. would find it literally thrilling to come up with like the most efficient waste disposal like system, like oh, all yeah, in, yeah. as far as like collection, like planning <clears throat> the routes of the garbage trucks, planning the most efficient way for them to like dispose of the waste and all this stuff. But on top of that, this is what I always say. Mm. is that unless you're doing one of those absolutely crucial jobs, like farming, being a doctor, waste disposal, building roads, something like that, no matter what type of job you have, Mm -hmm. it is equal in its contribution to society. So for example, if you're out there, like if your dream is to (laughs) 
start a business selling cupcakes mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then somebody else and then your safe job is to sell like uh or is to work at some company doing web development that you don't like doing yeah it's like those two things like yeah on a societal both level do not contribute like <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> no they do but it's like you're not saving anyone's lives and it's yeah i i was having a discussion recently with thomas and i forget what the context was because i don't think he was saying that like pursuing adventure archives was meaningless but for some reason at some point he said something along the lines of like what are you contributing to society no it's funny because i was just thinking about how i I mean i just i've often had the thought where like you think of someone like thoreau or even though he like only lived a mile from civilization but like someone who abandons life lives in the wilderness in a cabin people will say like this guy is contributing nothing but what are you contributing to society if you work like uh at a like health insurance company or something i mean you're contributing something but you could also argue that people in those positions are taking stuff from society. Okay. Here, here's the big takeaway for me is if you do not enjoy your life, okay. And you're constantly in a bad mood because of the job that you're doing, mm-hmm. you are decontributing to society. What's the opposite of con- contributing? <laughs> <laughs> taking you're like away. Taking away from society. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the, the most important thing and the biggest impact you can have on another person is your, in your, each interaction you have with another person and the way you interact with other people in society. So on a grand scheme, you need to be positive in your own life to be able to contribute to society. Mm. So like if you're doing some job that you hate and everybody you interact with knows that you're not happy, you're not making the world a better place that way. So you might as well at yeah, least yeah. make yourself happy, okay? That because you making yourself happy mm-hmm. is like I'm not going into like this Ayn Rand territory. I think she's a nut. So, but <laughs> at least making yourself <laughs> yeah. happy can like you are a person in the world. So making yourself happy does make society happy. And on the contrary, I mean, helping other people, like actually helping other people, makes you happy too. I think another problem is that like you know we have all these jobs and we get this sense that it's contributing something, but we don't know exactly what, and we don't know how useful it is. And so like, if we were under control of what we were creating or like doing, then you know that like, you know exactly what outcome it has on other people. And then you can feel good about it. Whereas like, if you're just working at some job where it's like a huge bureaucracy or something, like you don't feel connected to the eventual product that's being created, you know? Exactly. And, you know, and I think that's kind of just the problem our society is going through right now, which is the amount of growth and just sheer population numbers, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to have that small scale interaction, you know, because like making shoes, for instance, there's no shoemakers anymore. Yeah. There's big companies that make hunt, mass produced shoes. So it's harder to get that. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? But you know, like from the start of manufacturing Mm -hmm. to the end user, there's like, it's so blurry and so huge on how that works. So it's hard for people to find. But even then it's like, I feel like there's ways, you know, cause like at so many companies or something, it's just one guy at the top making the decision or like a board of people at the top making decisions. But it's like the people who are actually producing the whatever shoes or like they have no say over what happens, even though they're the ones who are like the most, the most intimately involved with creating the thing. And it's like, you know, that's no, I I, I guess like to bring it to a shallower level, it's like if we were producing adventure archives, but we had some horrible TV producer standing over our shoulder the whole time, like telling us what to do, then like the product we'd make at the end would be way worse because there'd be no heart. Yeah. Because you know, it's kind of like, um, this works out the same way in a lot of different aspects in life. But when you try to please people based on what you think they want rather mm-hmm. than what excites you, you just end up making like a facsimile of what is actually good. Mm-hmm. Like if we make what we like to make, then like-minded people will find it or hopefully find it and they will enjoy it. But if we make something that we just think people will like, mm-hmm. then we're just presenting like a false version of ourselves. And those people who are liking that false version, they're not even getting like a good like version of what they like. They're yeah, just they're just getting somebody who's doing a stuck copy watching of NCIS like. on TV and it's like, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's not throw NCIS under the bus. I'm sure that is a high quality program. <laughs> 
many high quality <laughs> actors and stories <laughs> actually going along with that i was thinking recently like i think one of the big fundamental keys to art is first being your number one fan like we've said before but also being your number one critic and like oh yeah and it's just sure. it's funny because like you love the thing you create so much but then you also nitpick every little detail that no one else would notice oh that's but, so true yeah. it's funny too because like last night we were watching the episode together yeah. and i was like oh man i forgot to put a period on that subtitle <laughs> and you were like good thing you're the only psychopath who would ever notice something like that. <laughs> but i was like no that's good because you no, want yeah, absolutely. a team of people who are maniacally attentive to different details mm -hmm. so that you get the whole picture covered yeah i mean it it kind of goes hand in hand with like loving what you're doing it's like if you love what you're doing you're gonna pay attention to those details and like if oh, you, right, if you yeah. don't pay attention to those details it probably just means that you don't love what you're doing in the first place so you know speaking of that i feel like um this is just uh, maybe this is tangential i don't know but mm -hmm. i feel like what you are like super passionate about in life can change. And mm -hmm. I think that it's important to realize that there's no like one true passion for your whole life. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example from my own life. Uh, some of you may know that I have a dance studio that I started with my mother and we started it in 2010. When we started that studio, it was literally the funnest thing, most passionate thing I've ever had in my life. And I just like loved every aspect of it. And I was like, oh man, even if we're not making money, this is great. Fast forward five years, we're still not making any money, but <laughs> it's also just like my, my passion for it. My passions have changed. Like mm -hmm, the things mm -hmm. that I'm interested in doing and like really passionate about, it's changed and they've evolved over time. And I think that's totally okay. I think a lot mm -hmm. of times we like to pigeonhole each other into being like, oh, well, you were so passionate about that the other day. And we just think that people are bouncing from thing to thing. But I think yeah, a lot of times yeah. that's important is that you should try out different things and get super into different things. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, sometimes things stick, sometimes they don't, you know? Because I used to like be an art major and really want to do some sort of art thing as a living and like draw. And then, and then I switched, but now I'm like, I didn't even realize how much I cared about nature. I mean, I knew I liked camping, but I didn't know I realized... I don't know. I wanted to like identify stuff until after college even and like oh, do all yeah, this tedious, true. like the tedium of <laughs> learning <laughs> about nature. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, I know what the different veins in this leaf are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of which is like, uh, we were just talking about having a team of people who can contribute different things. I think mm -hmm. that's one thing that works well for us is mm -hmm. that we all have different strengths and things that we're like really interested in. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'll sp I'll spend whole mornings looking at camera gear. Like uh, during mm -hmm. breakfast, I will go to BH Photo dot or BH Photo Video, and I will look at lenses for cameras. And I'm like, oh yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like in the same way, you'll go to like you'll you had that book on the table that was like it said something like. Who knew that identifying Ohio trees could be so fun? Oh, yeah. So it's like making tree identification even more fun. And it's like, <laughs> like nobody assumed it was fun in the first place. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but for you, it is, though, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, yeah. Definitely. Dude. And I think that's, um, I, I just think that's super cool. I love that people are like nerds about different things even within the editing process like we have these different things like i'm always doing the map sequence and then like you're always doing this other thing and like it's just like I'm always doing the audio <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> audio the color. I feel like i don't i don't want to touch that stuff but it's like <laughs> no it's great or like i don't know it's just that is a really interesting thing and i think that's like a good model for mm -hmm. exactly what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode about people like doing the things that they love like waste management i'm sure there yeah. are people who are super into waste management and would, mm -hmm. would love to figure that out and like look at it as like a great puzzle i mean just being in academia you look at all these highly researched papers about stuff that i could not care about at all like and there there are people out there who are weird enough to be into this mundane stuff yeah <laughs> and god bless them because <laughs> yeah no it's great dude i i think that's really cool actually about humanity is that we have such mm -hmm. a why like for me dude i love organizing i like, yeah what type of psychopath loves organizing <laughs> <laughs> like literally that is like 
anathema to you. You're just like, I would <laughs> yeah. rather go eat rocks. <laughs> or, <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, we should probably address what are we going to mm. talk about on these podcasts? Because I think we just should let people know that this is the type of stuff that we like to talk about and we'll probably talk mm-hmm. about on these episodes. Yeah. That's okay. a good question. I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we'll also address questions. We'll talk about places we've gone to and like, uh, I kind of want to do a Vesuvius breakdown, but I don't want to spoil the episode until everybody's seen it. So we'll probably save that until after mm-hmm. the episode's actually out for the public. Well, we could talk about the drone and how fun it is to use. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. So we got um, a drone and it's fun to use. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. It's actually kind of funny because I had pre-ordered this exact model of drone bef- when it was mm-hmm. first announced. I think it was last year, but um, oh right, they delayed the pre-order, so it, they delayed it like a month. And I was like, okay, never mind. And I was able to talk myself out of it because at the time it was like a thousand dollars. And then um, just like a few weeks ago, we were talking online about sliders and drones and stuff, and we were both like, we only got one life to live. And it's yeah. time to start living. So. <laughs> no fate, but the fate you make for yourself. <laughs> oh man, so we're making our fate. But anyways, I bought the drone, and God, man, the f- first of all, the footage it produces is amazing. Like you mm-hmm. never have that perspective of looking at everything from above. Like, yeah, that, yeah. Just as a human, you're just always on the ground, and you always see things from ground level. So to suddenly and the see smoothness of it too is oh, like, yeah, just so surreal. And it's also really funny how much it's like controlling a video game. Yeah. Like, it's literally it's, just like controlling a video game. It, it's so, like, it even has the same control scheme I use when I play Halo. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how easy it is to pick it up and learn, too. Like, at oh, least for yeah. us. I don't know. We've been playing video games for a while. but. <laughs> well, I don't know. But, I, I always hear these stories about people crashing drones all the time. And I'm like, oh, really? It could not be well, any easier for me yeah yeah and i always had the sense that it was easy to control them but you know this might be a really good drone though because the, the ones i've heard people crash are like the, all those tiny ones and stuff, uh, so uh. Possible as that. well that's actually something interesting to think about is like the logistics of using a drone for adventure archives because i mean first of all there's the big issue of national parks banning them but we found right. out you can use them in national forests but the other aspect is like how we carry it and stuff and oh yeah well see i'm looking at it right now and mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that we can easily take the propellers off and then, like, attach it to the top of a backpack. Shouldn't be too hard mm-hmm. to do that. And I, I tested it out with my phone today. And, like, you just put your phone in the holster and then you've got a little screen there. It's fantastic. Oh, instead of the bigger Instead one. of the big tablet, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Well, only, the other thing is uh, waterproofing, too. Because uh, we got to figure out a way to make sure it doesn't <laughs> get destroyed. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure we can figure something out, but I think it's totally worth it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It. Like, the, oh, absolutely. the shots we could get with this thing, man. Like, think about Red River Gorge. That was a national park, though, right? Is it? Um, that was, it was a geological area. I'm not sure. I don't know. It was what? in a Daniel Bloon Ma- National Forest, so it might have been allowed there, actually. Oh, my God. Dude, kid, if we had had the drone at Hanson's Point. Oh, man. Like, mind-blowing. Circling dude. around us or something. Blowing. Okay, this is yeah. what I'm talking about, or this is what you were talking about when you have to be your own number one fan. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if other people are excited about the prospect of seeing drone shots in our episodes, but however excited they are, I guarantee you I am ten times as more, ten times as excited <laughs> as you are. <laughs> I watched the uh, Patreon announcement video that we made, like, it had to have been 40 times because, or like 30 times or something because <laughs> i watched it as it like finished uploading and processing oh, yeah, so yeah, i could yeah. adjust <laughs> but no, it's no. like <laughs> that, this is totally worth it dude. i totally understand like it's funny too because i i think i've talked about on the vlog before but sometimes when i can't go to sleep at night i will sit there mm-hmm. and i will watch my vlog like these are video okay it's like this is how ridiculous it is i lived it then i filmed it then I edited it, and now I'm watching it, and some of them I've watched multiple times. <laughs> it's like we always talking about reliving or living and reliving. It's like our favorite thing to do. It's like oh, we mm-hmm. we do mm-hmm. something, we film it, and then we immediately look at it on the camera. I remember one recent night I was watching a bunch of these like 
behind the scenes videos we made like that october 1st halloween oh, video oh yeah i love that video um the thriller one and i was just thinking like we really need to make more videos like this like we can put them on your channel but just like videos that are really fast and fun and like easy to watch and yeah that's really like, know, just like skits and stuff for videos is those yeah, fast yeah. snappy hey what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because that's like the complete opposite of adventure archives but adventure archives yeah, is somehow yeah. our voice also yeah Oh, I guess. Who, knew, who knew people were three-dimensional people? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we just got range. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but this drone, I am super excited about it. Okay, so why don't we go to some questions? If you have questions, you can go to patreon.com slash adventure, and you can ask us questions there. You can also consider donating to our show. It's $2 to watch mm-hmm. episodes early. You can pay a little more and get other fun stuff. And, you know, we... We have 10,000 subscribers, and if one-tenth of those people donated $2, one episode a month at least, son. <laughs> oh, man. So, let's talk about, uh, let's not talk about it, but if we make it to $2,000 <laughs> per video, I guarantee you, you will get tons and tons of amazing full-length episodes, yeah. because that's that's enough money where we could actually put a roof over our heads and feed ourselves Oh yeah. on occasion. Like I, we, we can sustain our life <laughs> minimally. <laughs> okay, so uh, do you have some questions that people have asked? Yeah, yeah. So Gerald Witty, this is you're gonna like this. Uh, if you could use only one camera for still slash video slash night shots, what would you choose and why? I know what you're gonna say. Oh, I mean, like this is a done deal. It's the camera we're using right now, the Sony A7S Sony. Mark II. Mm. I could go through all the reasons why it's a really fantastic camera, but. It's also three thousand dollars without a lens. So if you add on a lens, it's probably going to be at least seven hundred on top of that. So thirty seven hundred dollars all in. But it is a four K camera. Wow. It can shoot basically in the dark. So like even in the dark, you can still see really well. It's got internal stabilization, so you don't need to have a lens that has a stable. That's a little too complicated. But anyways, it's a great camera. Well, what one thing to sum up like why it's so good at night is because. When we filmed our Yosemite Patreon announcement video, there's a shot at the end of us looking at the star, or not us looking at the stars, but just of the stars in real time. And you can see a shooting star. Wow. Like we happen to get a shooting star, yeah, but yeah, like in true. real time, you can actually see that on a camera. It, for those of you who don't know too much about cameras, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah. What, actually, I don't think a lot of people realize that because a lot of those like moon landing conspiracy theorists are like, uh, how come you can't see the stars in those pictures of the moon? And it's like, well, <laughs> you're on a giant shining orb. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's true. Okay. Well, why haven't we gone back to the moon with HD cameras? Just my camera for God's sake. I'm not, gonna, I'm not talking about conspiracy. I just like, I want to see HD footage of the moon. But actually, if we if we get two thousand dollars per video, <laughs> we're going there. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke. By the way, we can't actually go to the moon. I will say though that um, if you're looking for a budget camera and you're looking for a cheaper option, there's a couple of dip- different options that I would talk about. Panasonic G7 is a nice all-around camera at a very affordable, like five or six hundred dollars US. If you want a nice 4K camera with interchangeable lenses. You can get the Sony A6300. That's actually the one that Thomas just got. And then if you're wanting mm-hmm. a super compact camera that's also 4K, I would get the Sony RX100 Mark IV. This might be um, sacrilege to some people, but I would stay far away from Canon. They produce the worst video image quality of any of the cameras on the market right now. Wait, even still today? I thought that was just because the one we had was old. No, no. All of them just, they do not look good. They're not doing anything to improve it. And they're not even coming out with 4K cameras. They're acting like 4K is not important. And to (laughs) me, like, it's night and day. HD to 4K, even without a 4K monitor, you can see the difference. You, if you, you don't even need to know what to look for. If I showed you a comparison, Mm -hmm. you would see it right away. Nate Laguza, what is your favorite hiker's dinner? This is your friend. Oh, yes. This is my good friend, Nate. He's out in L.A. doing all sorts of wonderful drum and music stuff. He's He was a drummer. I think he's still doing freelance drums, but he's also trying to get into music composition and stuff. Uh, do you have an answer for this? I would say um, the Riverside Restaurant, whatever that was called, Riverwatch or whatever, that we went to after our 2012 Smokies trip. Um, we had like fried green, green tomato, tomato, tomatoes, oh, tomatoes, and goodness. frog legs, and that's just one of the oh, most memorable. Post hike meal. 
well hikers oh hikers dinner i guess i guess I, that's I, I was figuring he another was way to interpret it is an actual dinner eat while we're hiking yeah no that that makes sense well in that case i would say the calzones we had well what's man that's such a good question because food for me is kind of like uh an afterthought thought for that type of thing and i i want to make more of an effort to actually mm-hmm. prepare stuff to like cook on the when we're hiking because it's just for me it's just like i i want to focus on other things but man it's so great when you actually take the time to prepare something ahead of time which you always do yeah i think for me like of all the things we've made on the episodes probably that pizza you made at the first episodes of episode of dolly sods was awesome oh yeah with the cheese and yeah that was great yeah it was such a good time too like it was so much fun to like that dolly that Mm -hmm. dolly sods episode that place is still to this day my favorite place we've ever camped because i've just never been anywhere that yeah, is yeah. like that diverse in its environment you know yeah and you always like it's one of those places where you're like wow this actually exists in real life it's not just yeah, like in I a know. movie or something uh let me ask a question this is only semi-related what okay. is your favorite thing in the world like what what is it that you value more than anything else <laughs> Because I have an answer to this, but I'm not sure if you've ever thought about this. Uh, I mean, I think if I had to boil everything down, it'd be like, it'd be vague, but it'd be like a connection with other living things, both people and wilderness. Uh, explain. I mean, is that is that too vague? I don't know. It's just like, whenever I'm happiest in life, it's when I'm hanging out with friends or family or if, when I'm out in the wilderness. Mm. And I feel like those things besides like fundamental human needs to sustain life are like... Mm, the thing I like that, that I need. answer. That's actually a really good one. Um, it'll make me look like mm. a, kind of a jerk when I say this, but I think for me, <laughs> no, that that's <laughs> definitely way up there. But for me, like the more I think about it, the most important thing to me is a sense of freedom. And I don't mean like I do what, like oh, yeah, no, that's I, a good one too. Remember that mm-hmm. one quote in One Giant Leap where he's like, I don't think that freedom is doing what you like, want to f- do all. Yeah. to do is doing what you want yeah yeah because then you're yeah, still controlled no, by your desires but i want the feeling of where i'm free of feeling like i'm doing something because i have to do it i like the like more important yeah. than anything in my life is whatever i'm doing i put joy into it you know let's let me t- but, say so many tv shows there's this moment where someone just snaps oh so yeah, like yeah breaking yeah. bad he tells the his boss to just f off and then quits and then Mad Men he just like leaves and starts driving and th- like there's obviously this deep desire in everybody to just like not have anyone controlling what they do and even if you're not like economically threatened like even if you're not at the threat of starvation or something because you can't afford food there's still this feeling of oppression where like you're being shamed for doing what you want or for like you know just trying to live a full yeah, life or something I mean, we've talked about it before, um, probably not so extensively on Adventure Archives, but I've definitely talked about it on the vlog, and uh, we've talked about some on this podcast, but just this sense of, like, uh, you always feel like the hammer is about to drop down on you, okay? Like, for instance, I just turned in my taxes today, mm-hmm. and I reported all my income. I was 100% truthful on all my income and expenses, but still there's this thought in my head. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, am I going to get in trouble for this? And like, is somebody going to yell at me and am I going to get audited and all this stuff? And it's like, where does that sense of Mm -hmm. dread and like the super ego, where does that come from? And why is it, what use does it serve? Because for me, it's always just held me back. That has never actually helped me. So I'm just like, that is the one thing that's more important than anything to me is to be free of that feeling. And not mm-hmm. feel like I'm always like under. And I would say that if if you're a human being, like the best thing you can do in terms of personal interactions is like do your best not to judge people and just like encourage them, like as a human being. I like, like that. I don't know. Just no, I think that's good. Yeah. Let's just try to whittle <laughs> down at this. <laughs> no, I, I think it's like also uh, let's give each other more slack and like it, whenever you get the urge yeah. to judge other people for what they're doing, which. Let, let me be clear i absolutely get that urge and i am not proud of that part of myself mm-hmm. but i mean like that's something everybody's always working towards overcoming but 
Whenever you get that urge to judge somebody else, instead be like, how can I contribute to the world and what can I do to make my life and other people's life a little better? Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry for that tangent. Uh, what other questions do we got? <laughs> All right, Owen J. Smith asks when we're going to Yellowstone. We are planning to go in May for season three, episode one. Uh, Victor Estrada. Well, actually, I just bought a Yellowstone map today, so I'm going to try to plan that out. But uh, Victor Estrada asks, what editing software do you use or what books would you recommend as starting points? I assume books to learn how to video edit. Um, but what I would say, well, so we use Adobe Premiere, but we've used Sony Vegas in the past. Um, my advice, if you're trying to learn how to video edit, is go to YouTube to learn how to use the program and watch a lot of media to learn how to yeah, edit properly. I think you don't need books at <laughs> like, all. I don't know. You don't need to pay any money. In fact, we didn't pay any money to learn these programs at all. Use Google, mm -mm. have trust in your ability to find the answers to the questions you want. But just as a starting point, mm -hmm. use a YouTube tutorial. Just look up how to edit with Adobe Premiere, take some dumb home video you have yeah. and just start editing. And then as far as like style mm -hmm. and like actually coming up with a, your own like voice, so to say, watch videos, think about all mm -hmm. the stuff that you've seen and watch your own videos. Oh yeah. Definitely watch your own. Yeah, like, yeah. I think that's the thing is you gotta, don't be, uh, I, I tell this to people a lot. Don't be so attached to what you film. Do not, mm -hmm. this is like cardinal rule. Number one, do not use the full length of the shot just because it was a lot of effort to set the shot up. I don't care if the shot took you like 25 minutes to set up. If it only needs to be on screen for yeah, three yeah, seconds, yeah. only put it on screen for three seconds. Like don't be attached to something just because you spent a lot of time and effort on it. If it ruins the flow of the whole story or the whole piece. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause then it's just wasted effort completely. Yeah. And then I think also just like um, a be, be willing to make mistakes and just actually try different things just go do it yeah go do no, it. that's <laughs> it's it's so funny to think about like how many influences there are in our style like what was that anime artist you were telling me about who like makes those beautiful paintings and uh yoshitaka amano it's like the guy with the power lines and like oh you were uh, well, i'm blanking on his name yeah, he did the place promised in our early days yeah yeah makoto shinkai it's so funny how all these like different things that i'm not sure i've even actually seen in through my own eyes but like you get all these emotions and feelings and I like, I don't know, just these feelings. It's not these specific, like, Oh, I, this is how it has to be, but just these emotions you want to evoke. And like, there's so many influences that I draw from when I think about like stuff that I want to create, not necessarily that I am creating, but like, like, uh, shots and breaking bad will influence me. But then like shots, like feelings from anime and like video games, obviously like Lord of the Rings movies, stuff like that. It's just like, there's so many different things. And then, you just gotta like mix the ingredients together and cook it in your brain and like <laughs> that's that's exactly figure it. figure out how to actually yeah uh jonathan zalozabal says how did we decide to start this channel and we've sort of addressed this in the past so i'll just give a quick answer which is that um we got into outdoors in 2007 and uh when robbie's brother took us camping and then we took like cheesy pictures and we started editing gla uh, glorified slideshows and uh we started thinking like there's all these outdoor shows about survival, but we want to create something that's like enjoyable and relaxing to watch that really like speaks to us. And so we did it. Yeah. I think survival is not our key thing. Enjoyment is mm -hmm. our modus operandi. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it's mm -hmm. not about like going out in the wild and I mean, no, that those are totally great. Uh, survival things are awesome. I think they're super fun to watch. I love watching bear grills mm -hmm. like that dramatized survival survivor man's great all that stuff's great <laughs> but just we wanted to approach a different angle we wanted to say how much fun it is and how how relaxing and safe it can be you know mm -hmm. uh, that was a big impetus i think <laughs> oh but you know just and a then, quick note on the oh, side mm -hmm. is for me a big part of the show it's kind of like um it's everything i loved about rpgs that i played as a kid only mm -hmm. I'm creating them now. So like I get to be on yeah, the creation side. Yeah, yeah. It's got the music, the story, the beautiful visuals. The environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like the the journey, the camaraderie, like all of those things that I loved about those games. And like it's my way of creating that because I, I don't know how to create video games. So it's one way to And do actually that. 
I feel like that's something that like something that I will never want to take away from our videos. And like every time we've tried to do like a day hike or something in a video, it's, it hasn't turned out as well as we hoped, but it's like that sense of a continual journey. It's like the Hobbit man there and back again, oh, you know, yeah. like yeah. this continual story. Yeah. I, I think day hikes just do not work for us. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't yeah. feel right. Cause there's no like motivating factor, but Okay, Joshua Michael asks, have you ever considered filming an episode that deals more with sheltering in one place? Uh, some basic bushcraft tutorials would be interesting to watch. I enjoy all your channel's content. Never be game over. Never be Thank game you over so much. from something. I'm going to look that up while you answer that question. <laughs> um, so we actually, Brian and I were actually just talking about this a day or two ago. Um, but yeah, we've definitely considered doing that. And I think the biggest thing is just figuring out where the best place to do this would be. I mean, obviously we're not going to be able to cut down any trees or whatever, um, on federal land, but we could use like dead materials to create things. And yeah, we, we've definitely thought about doing a more bushcraft focused one, um, with like carving things and creating shelters. I also need to get my fishing license cause that'd be awesome. But well, you need a license yeah, to fish. So the, I think so. At least on like public land. Oh wow. I would love to fish and yeah. cook a fish. Yeah on an episode do you know how amazing that would be oh yeah oh my god it's i mean it's gonna happen it's just a matter of when. <laughs> this is true i feel bad for the fish but <laughs> no it's I've, how many animals have you eaten in your life like this is way better yeah, you're right. where you're actually yeah, at least i'm uh, doing it myself you're doing yeah. it yourself <laughs> and like you, you know that that fish has lived a happy life in a real pond and all yeah, that stuff. yeah yeah uh never be game over is from metal that's gear solid point. 5 it's on eli's jacket that's where i recognized it from oh um which I, that's curious that he would put that there. Jay Sullivan asks, I appreciate that Mason jars are reusable and very green, but there's gotta be a better way to enjoy sauerkraut or kimchi on the trail. Aren't you afraid of breaking the glass? Uh, we've, uh, I'm not actually. Yeah, No, well, first of all, the, we've only broken a jar once and that was a half gallon jar, which, okay, here's what I'll say. Do not bring a half gallon Mason jar. <laughs> like you do not need that much sauerkraut, no matter how long you're, <laughs> um, but like the smaller jars, the ones that are like a pint and a half, those are, it, those things are really strong. Like they're not going to break. Like, <clears throat> especially mm -hmm. when they're in like the middle of your backpack, it, it's totally fine. Yeah. I mean, and you can keep it within another bag so that like, even if it does shatter, it'll be contained at oh, least, you know? Oh, that's true. Yeah. No, I mean, just... Yeah, I don't it, know. It won't really... Like, if you, your jar's not too big, you'll be totally fine. We've been totally I fine. I feel like the only concern would be if you're, like, really trying to reduce weight. And in that case, I mean, I, I think you've brought sauerkraut in a bag before or something, right? No, but, it was after I broke that half-gallon one, we put it in a bag. Oh, right, right, right. And it gets pretty nasty when you put it in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, so... No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> um, Carrie Minton... Oh, Thank you, Carrie Mitten, by the way, for being a patron. Oh, yes. Thank um, you very much. I'm excited to see the new video and happy to support you guys. Me and my kids are in the Smokies right now, and they just started their first fire with very little help from me. We are a Cub Scout family with the goal of making it to Eagle. My nine-year-old would like to know if any of you were in Scouts. Who introduced you to the outdoors, and how did you learn to start a fire? Uh, my 15-year-old would like to know if you have ever considered working for National Geographic. Oh, man. Um, it's funny because when I was a kid, I actually, like had a weird disdain of boy scouts <laughs> but i think it was because like all my friends were in it and i felt excluded um and also like oh, back your friends then, were in it yeah some of them i don't think i knew a single person who was in boy scouts well like so one of my like my best friend jess was in it and then or scouts so was my friend grant yeah I, I, but then there was like this one kid and like back then i didn't like him. i don't know <laughs> well, I thought the but also back then like looked really like they just made it look so uncool that i i never even considered yeah, it an option that was actually a big part of it is like this whole idea of wearing a uniform and obeying authority for some reason i was like a rebellious kid <laughs> but also like back then i don't know the only time i ever saw scouts do anything it was like not outdoorsy because otherwise i think i would have loved it but I don't know. I was a weird kid. <laughs> well, it's, but w w I didn't get into the outdoors at all until literally 2007. Mm. Like it took, th there was a mm -hmm, story mm -hmm. that I gave at my brother's wedding where I was like, whatever my brother does, what I'll do is I'll first I'll mock it. And then a year or two later, I'll be like, oh, actually he was right. And I'll do the same thing. <laughs> but actually camping was one of those things. He was like, uh, he went camping and then he took us all out. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. I love camping. Was that really the last time he'd been camping? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, he went camping with so us weird. in two thousand seven, 
in i mean he's been to like he's been outdoors and yeah, stuff, but yeah. he hasn't actually camped in a tent since then and i'm not yeah. sure he's ever been oh he did do backpacking at red river gorge never mind he's he's mm-hmm. camped since then he was just joking but yeah so neither one of us were in scouts but and then uh how did you learn how to start a fire because do you remember when we tried to start a fire when sunjan my brother took us to uh hawking hills yeah back then i literally thought you could hold a lighter up to a log and it would like burn <laughs> yeah that's like, so <laughs> funny because i thought the same thing and it's like well i think part of it is like people always talk about like oh house fires and i'm like man it must be really easy to start a fire <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but then I, I mean, I think mostly I learned from like watching survival shows like Les Stroud and Bear Grylls and Ray Mears. And, uh, I was like, oh, you actually have to build it up. <laughs> but then when I got good at it, I, it was at a survival class, which let me preface this by saying, I know he's a controversial figure in the you outdoor bushcraft world. You don't have to preface world. that, bro. Just to- I know, but it's just like, I, well, I took a class with Dave Canterbury because he's in Ohio and I'm in Ohio. And I mean, whatever, it was a great class. And, uh, I was like, wow. I'm way better at starting fires with a striker now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great, dude. Like, yeah. um, actually this past episode is the first time on camera where I've done the fire by myself. And, uh, mm-hmm. I've always said that, like, I, I want to actually practice that more because I'm a very firm believer that you can do pretty much if you can, if you can see somebody else do something with enough time, effort and practice, you can do it too. Mm. It's just, I've never mm-hmm. actually put it. I'm usually the one behind the camera filming that stuff, mm-hmm. but I would like to get much better and actually practice at it because I feel like right now, like after red river gorge, man, you are like the fire starting master. Like that <laughs> fire that you started at red river gorge was like, I was so impressed. Like I, I wanted to start clapping. <laughs> yeah it's funny how much trouble we used to have because we were just it's like uh i don't know it's kind of like in life man you just can't be too timid i guess i'm a timid guy sometimes but oh yeah it's like when you have a tiny flame and you put one stick on at a time it's like that's not how you do it like you got to gather a ton of stuff and oh man we should talk about that real quick i remember when we filmed the first episode when people asked us what we were doing we were almost like embarrassed to say what we were doing and it's such a strange thing but man go forth confidently in the directions of your dreams, son. <laughs> that's funny because that's actually a Thoreau quote. No, I know. I'm quoting <laughs> <Are> we, him. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and like now if people ask us, we're like, no, we got a YouTube channel. Here's our business card. We make yeah, videos. Yeah. And it's like we could be, we could have done that from the very beginning, even though we had yeah. no subscribers. We didn't even have a video yet. But like, yes, we have a YouTube channel. We are filmmakers. We make videos. And that's just a quick tangent, but I don't know. It's just like, there's no reason to be timid about the things that you're excited mm-hmm. about. You know? And the irony is that we were so proud of the things we were making back then. Yeah. And when we look back on them now, we're like, this is garbage. <laughs> like, I just had to tell someone who like, just fa- like a friend who just found our videos. I was like, oh, Yo, you're watching episode three. Don't watch that. Watch this one instead. <laughs> episode three um, of all episodes. That is like. <laughs> I know. It's a lesky, man. <laughs> I mean, um, it's fine. Good thing it's we've fine. redeemed it. Yeah. 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 Go go ahead and watch it right now. <laughs> uh, and then her 15-year-old wants to know if we have ever considered working for National Geographic. Oh, I mean, of course. That's like a dream, but... We haven't put forth... We're not... It's like... We, we actually did put forth a yeah. little bit of effort to try and pitch to PBS, but we never yeah, actually yeah. followed through with that. But, you know... No, I was going to say, I think, like, ultimately not like if you're going to get spiritual i think that's what the universe wants or whatever <laughs> oh is, uh, i wasn't gonna get spiritual but i agree with you well yeah like not universe but i think ultimately it's like better that like i think we'll be happier if we do it on our own and like forge our own path oh so here's the thing with with that for me is that we are making enough money on the side doing other things to support ourselves and I would rather yeah. not be making. I, mean, I got to find a job soon, but. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, we'll figure that out later. <laughs> I'll I'll help you figure it out if you need. To. But um, the I would rather be making no money and be able to do it exactly the way that we want to do it mm-hmm. than have like some lucrative deal with the Discovery Channel or PBS or whoever National Geographic. Don't get me wrong; I would love to work for them. Just. I, like I said earlier, freedom is like the most important thing to me. So like mm. if we had to give up freedom for that, I I think there's like a bounds of reason. Like I think I could produce stuff for someone else, but man, sometimes the ideas that we talk about, it's just like completely opposite of what I'm thinking. Like, well also I think 
it just this is my opinion, but I don't. I think it's mm-hmm. backed up by the the things that I'm seeing is that YouTube is only going to get bigger. The people who are mm-hmm. watching YouTube, they're in their teens. Like 13 year old kids are the people who sustain YouTube, and yeah. as they get older, it's they're not, not going to switch to Netflix or switch to like broadcast TV for God's sake. They're going to keep watching YouTube. So when they oh, get yeah. older and they want content like this, like that's where we'll be. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just I love the idea of YouTube because especially the interaction that we get with people. Like, can you imagine? having been able to have a direct conversation with the people who made your favorite shows as a kid, the way that people are able to do that with us. Like it's, mm-hmm. an, it's unheard of. Like that's such a cool thing that that's a possibility now, man. Yeah. It's, that's one of the greatest parts about the channel and like, it's just being able to interact with people and like, Oh man, building that this sort of community we did on this, this weekend was fantastic. That was oh, so yeah. much fun. I was so amazed. Like we, we turned out on live, no prior announcement, and instantly there were 23 people. And I was like, wow, that is like amazing. <laughs> At least 23 people actually semi care what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, Carrie, thanks again for being a patron. And uh, that's awesome that your kids are like Cub Scouts because, I mean, that's such an opportunity that I wish I had as a kid was like being able to learn those skills early on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's never too late. Don't get me wrong. Oh, but sure, yeah. that's awesome. Well, it's Mm -hmm. funny because like, uh, you never know, like that we might appreciate nature even more now because of that, because we didn't have it as a kid, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, yeah. Cause like, that's one thing is like, don't force those things on your kids, you know? Like, Oh yeah. Let them discover it on their own. I mean, you can like encourage them, but yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, one more question. Larissa Santon asks, do we have a dog? And if yes, do we think about hiking with it in one of the episodes of Adventure Archives? That's actually, Brian has been talking about how badly he wants a dog and how it'd be great to take one hiking. I, am I don't think. One million percent with him. Well, actually, you, what was your, what were you about to say? Sorry. No, I was just going to say none of us have a dog. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm one million percent with him. I would love to have a dog, but I travel too much and I would not give the dog a good home. Mm. But otherwise, man, I would have a dog so quickly. I wanted a dog growing up so badly and i never had one dogs are great yeah that's the thing is like i I have trouble enough taking care of my my own self it's like i can't take care of another living organism (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) brian can address the dog question a bit if you want to sure um i actually uh briefly thought about adopting a dog um and i know andrew and i have tossed the idea around about how cool it would be to have a dog when we go hiking and camping um but i think uh, Andrew said this too, but at this point, we're just not at a point in our life where we can probably properly take care of a dog. Um, I mean, since I'm working all day and it would be the first dog that we would ever take care of. So the responsibilities are a little too high at this point. <laughs> okay. So Sweden, what do you know about it? And will you ever visit Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and to a lesser extent, Finland, because for some reason I've not heard much about Finland. But for some reason, those countries keep coming into my life and I really want to visit them. Like the, for some reason, I really like uh, Norwegian music, like Norwegian rap music in particular. <laughs> there, I f- heard a few songs with that and I'm like, man, this music's awesome. But it looks beautiful. The country seems to have like the same politic, political ideas that I do. And it just seems like an awesome place. Yeah, to I don't know if anyone from Scandinavia knows this, but every time people in America talk about Scandinavia, it's like only the highest praise like <laughs> it's like true, yeah. it's usually about how america should be more like scandinavia or something i feel like well At also doesn't sweden have that uh wilderness rule where you can go yeah anywhere? the right to roam rule where like yeah yeah apparently a lot of european countries have that but like you just have the right to walk wherever apparently oh, like awesome, i think dude. even on private property or something if you're passing by lingonberries Oh yeah, yeah. Those are, those are I've had lingonberry jam. Those are good. <laughs> I want to try a Swedish princess cake. What's the country? Is it? Is it the Netherlands where they eat those sardines? I want to try those sardines someday. What sardines? There's some country where like they have salted herrings. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. I'm I'm an American and we have bad worlds, <laughs> bad global knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, 
actually we should talk about that real quick because yeah it is know, dutch it's the netherlands isn't it weird no, how we like uh it, there's a tendency for us to shame people for not knowing things like maybe uh-huh. maybe just people are i mean there's plenty of instances where people just are ignorant and they should probably know a little bit more but there's plenty of other instances where it's like look man i've spent a lot of time learning a lot of things i don't have time yeah, to yeah. know every single bit of trivia about every single thing probably I, I blame our education system <laughs> uh, dude you want to go off on the education system real quick because i can go no. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> oh man okay well there's more questions actually well we can oh. address this real quick would you ever allow a viewer to go pack backpacking with you absolutely it's just um organizing the logistics that, yeah the logistics of it, it's like it is a, it is much more difficult than it even should be for us to get each other organized. <laughs> <laughs> like so to involve another person who we don't even know is just like it's kind of a, a task we're not up to at the moment. But we would love yeah, to do like, it. It would be so much fun. I mean, we've definitely thought about having a meetup or like, you know, midnight spaghetti like we talked about in the live chat. Oh yeah, spaghetti <laughs> um, archives. Or, uh, spaghetti archives, yeah. Um <laughs> Or like a public screening where we actually gather in a theater or space to watch an episode. Yeah, that would be awesome. But backpacking itself is like, I mean, we definitely want to like meet up with people if we're in the area and stuff, but it's just so hard to like, but it's not a, out of the question at all. Oh, no. Well, also yeah. there, there's other episode ideas that I want to do, like um, where we each take a friend who's not somebody who goes backpacking that often. And then we mm-hmm. all, we each take one person and then we go out camping and then we do like a we do a different route and then on the final day we meet up or on the second to final day or whatever like that. Yeah, that'd be great. I think that'd be really cool. Um, okay, there is one more question. Let me refresh this too. But where Where's is your, your favorite, favorite place to hike in Indiana? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 uh, do you have an answer for this? I would say Hoosier. Like, I mean, we've been to backpacking in two places there. Morgan Monroe is great. So was Hoosier. I I don't know. I like. Can you beat Hoosier National Forest? Do you know of any other places? Uh, I, I don't know of it. Turkey Run is the only other one I know, and I don't think they have backpacking there. I went there as a kid. Yeah, it's just like a, So I don't really remember mm-hmm. it that well. Yeah, it's like yeah. being in the Midwest. There's not a lot to choose from. <laughs> well, there is, but no. I mean, there's plenty to choose from, man. It's like, yeah, yeah. That's just just like the theme of our last episode. Doesn't matter where you go, son. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah as long as you're doing something you like that doing. that is actually something i really do believe like i i think if you go to a national park and you have like go and see all the stuff people talk about but if that's all you're doing i don't know i just like if you can if you're able to you should go backpacking or something you know I'd, we, mm-hmm. we were talking about this on the live chat a little bit but they were i think i disagreed with you guys a little bit on this but like uh if you're going backpacking for the first time i really feel like it's kind of like a lot of other things in life. It's just, just go do it. Okay. The worst. Oh yeah. We were talking about underpacking versus overpacking. I think. Yeah. I absolutely think just go out there, make sure you have enough food and water. Don't go in a bear country. Just make it easy on yourself Mm -hmm. and stick to the trails and you will have a great time. Like the most important, the the biggest hurdle is initially doing something right. Mm -hmm. Once you get over that initial hurdle, then you can really like experiment and then see where you need to iterate and make things, mm-hmm. make improvements and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, there's definitely things you could do to be safe. Like learn about what to do if you're bitten by a snake, which is to stay calm and try to hike out. But, um, it's like, even if you don't know that, I don't think anyone has a right to tell you, you shouldn't be out there. Like, I mean, like trying to survive is one thing, but if you're just out there with friends taking a hike through the woods, like, I think it's almost elitist to be like, oh, you have to have this certain skill set to I absolutely be agree. allowed to do that. Yeah. I 100% agree. You don't need a fire to camp, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Let me tell you something. Fires are completely optional. You will not freeze to death without a fire. Yeah. In fact, you won't even be cold in the summer. You'll be fine if you, just, if you have a sleeping bag. But mm-hmm. uh, just, just like a, on, on a more general note to like broaden it to life and not just camping, really just – Whatever it is you want to do, so many times it's just the initial like fear of getting out and doing it. Like mm-hmm. you just need to get over that initial hump and be like, you know, I'm just going to do this, even if this is like a complete unmitigated disaster. Let's go do it. Like yeah. asking a girl out, right? Like it took <laughs> me way too long. Like when I was in like middle school, high school, I just couldn't get over that initial hump of like just being like, okay, I'm just going to do this. This might be a complete disaster, but I'm just going to go for it, right? Yeah, yeah. 
But then the more you do something like that, the easier it gets. Or like when I started the vlog, right? The first few times mm-hmm. I did it, I was like, man, this is so much effort. I got to film all this stuff and then, you know, do all this. And then, the, and then as you get going, it's actually easier to do it than it is to not do it. And it, yeah, it, there's yeah. so many things like that in life, but camping or backpacking is easily one of those things. Just go do it. And you'll learn so much just from doing it. <laughs> you will learn a lot just from doing it because you'll see where <laughs> what stuff you still need. And I actually find that process really enjoyable. Just like yeah, that's anything. the thing is like I never read any books on like how to backpack. Step one, it's just like you do it, and you're like, okay, now I know yeah, what I did it. wrong. And it's like, well, I did that wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like us. So, I mean, we've had eleven episodes where we have not prepared for rain yet. And maybe one of these days we will prepare for rain and we'll be like oh it's raining no problem because we prepared ahead of time and we know what to do <laughs> but the future is doubtful so but it's like know. even then like we're out there with expensive camera equipment getting rained on and nothing's ever gone really that bad like it's like temporary discomfort temporary discomfort that's true yeah no yeah. I, I think it's uh I mean, there's always a chance things can go horribly wrong, but the same can be said about your morning commute. So (laughs) that's true. Yeah. In fact, statistically, Mm -hmm. it's probably much more likely that something bad would happen on the morning commute. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, uh, living in civilization, there's kind of the tendency to think that that's the only safe way, but actually that's a very short part of human history to live in civilization. Oh yeah. Everything Mm -hmm. else was living out in the wild and fending for yourself and hunting every day and yeah. growing food and cooking it's amazing like that's so amazing to think about like <laughs> that is what humanity is and we've gone so far from it. i mean it's like building things and creating things is also humanity but still it's just weird like man yeah it's, s- it is really weird because it, th- think about how far we've come man we've come really yeah. far oh speaking of which let's um there's a quick question i have for you do you still or, okay I don't know how to phrase this without giving away the answer, but <laughs> do you think that now is the best time to live in history? Um, God, that's a good question. Because like, I, you know, the more I think about this, I feel like you can't pick a point in human history. That's the best time. Unless you, I don't mean, maybe like if you go back hundreds of thousands of years or something. <laughs> because okay, like, well, for me, I go ahead. If you well, have an answer, I, I know what you're getting at, but I also think like there's a lot of things that are good about now, but I think we way romanticize the present. Oh, okay. Well, see, my thing is, is that, mm-hmm. um, it, there's, there's a couple of ways to look at it. Mm-hmm. I think on the whole, this is the best time to live in human history. The okay. amount of amazing, cool things that you can do. I was mm-hmm. flying a drone today. And it was like 400 feet above the ground and I was like, you couldn't even see it. And I was filming and I was on this wireless device watching what the drone was looking at. Okay. That is amazing. It's so cool. We have medical technology. We have all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, it's amazing. But I also feel like we've like, there's always a trade-off, right? Oh yeah. Because you lose the natural splendor that the early humans got to see every day. Yeah. Right. So we get to see the things that we've created that are amazing, but we don't get to see the things that the earth has created that are amazing every day. Mm-hmm. Although technically the earth did create it because they, it created us and we created <laughs> stuff. So, but you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's yeah. always that trade off. Like, so I don't think yeah. that the iPhone is like the, the end all be all of what humans are all about or what's great about whenever people defend the current state of things they always go to the iphone and i'm like that is the weakest argument you could make ever like i could live (laughs) without an iphone the only thing an iphone does for me is it helps me have more entertaining number twos on the toilet like (laughs) that's the only (laughs) actual benefit i get from it like (laughs) well i think the other thing is that all of this technology we have like it's absurd dude what Mm -hmm. are we doing right now we are talking to each other 200 miles away from yeah, each yeah, other yeah. when all we could be doing is talking to each other in the same room. But for some reason, we felt like, oh, you know what? Now we're going to build a civilization where family lives far away from each other. Yeah. And all of your friends are going to be scattered all over the globe, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. But it's also like you lose the fact that we could all just be living in the same neighborhood and yeah, hanging and like, out with each other every day. To clarify, we don't need like this roundabout. 
the things I like about modern civilization are like, I mean, I think it's like the social prospect, uh, progress aspect, but then like, then again, there were also places that had good societies before like certain aspects about moder modernity were introduced. But like, I think social progress is good. I think modern medicine is good. But, um, and I used to like super romanticize like, the stone age and stuff and like living in oh, the me complete too. world. Yeah, no, I, I and, was right there with you. And like, I don't think that's entirely cause like, I mean, you get stabbed or something or gored by an, a deer and you're screwed. <laughs> but <laughs> at the same time, it's like, we always talk about, Oh, there's all these things to do. There's all these phones and amazing like entertainment. And it's like, I could do away with all that at the fundamental at, at its most fundamental, everything about entertainment that you enjoy is about connecting with other human beings like whether Absolutely. it's wh whether it's going to a bar or watching netflix and chill <laughs> or like <laughs> like all of that the fun part is being with people like watching the super bowl the the part you like is like getting together with your family and eating food and like they you were know doing what? that since I, i've the come to a new answer about this mm -hmm. is that the best time to live in human history was any time that you were alive because ah. fundamentally like there's no point in like a long existence if it's not a good existence. Mm -hmm. And there's fundamentally no difference between a short, great existence and a long, great existence. So mm -hmm. like if I die tomorrow, but I've done, the, but that day I spent doing things that I love doing and I felt like my time was worthwhile, that's totally fine. Like we, I think we often put too much emphasis on like a quantity of time. Like, oh yeah, this has to be, great for a long time or like like life expectancy is the thing that's always brought up but man if you were living in the stone age and you only lived to 30 but those were 30 exciting great years mm, of like mm -hmm. you know hunting bears and <laughs> seeing amazing sunsets and dancing uh, doing and stuff and laughing and, and painting you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> <laughs> like it, then it's just as good as like 80 years in the modern mm. day you know it, yeah that's a really good answer actually um, I would yeah. say that the best time to be alive would be in 2063 when Vulcans make first contact with humanity <laughs> <laughs> and we get the warp drive and no, I'm just kidding, but yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's like a really good answer. It's like, whatever the condition is, like, there's always going to be some downside. I think the key is to live it to the fullest and do your best to improve the conditions of life so that other people yeah. can enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, it really boils down to exactly that. It's yeah. like make every interaction with another person as best you can and just do one step at a time. Mm. Sounds corny, but it's actually like the only effective method of change. Yeah, yeah. Or not not even change. I mean, like, there's nothing wrong. I mean, there's plenty of stuff wrong, but I mean, just the only effective method of like actually improving each other's lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I think that's actually a good place to wrap up. Do you have any closing thoughts? Do we have any final questions that we missed, et cetera? Yeah, let's check if there's any more questions before we head off. But I just want to say thank you guys again for all your support. Thank you, all the patrons. Go check out that episode. You, it's a good one. Yeah, if you want to, you can go to patreon.com slash adventure. Mm -hmm. $2 will get you uh, access to the early release of the episode. You can watch it right now. If you don't have the money, no problem. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share the videos. Mm -hmm. That helps us out too. And you can always wait for the public release of the video, which is April 17th. Yes. You know what day of the week that is? That is a Sunday. Oh, that is a Sunday. You can, we'll release it 1201 on April 17th. So you can watch it. Get your friends together, get your family together, crack open some beers or some soda pops or ice water. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some popcorn. Yeah, get Man, some popcorn. That would be super fun to watch an episode with some popcorn. Oh, yeah. Like some, a, uh, for me, it'd be sparkling water. Some Grippos, like Grippo <laughs> chips. <laughs> no, really, though. Like, make it a family affair or a friend affair. Yeah, no, actually, it's really fun to watch with other people. Yeah. It's super fun. And make sure they subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure you grab their phones while they're watching and yeah, be like, yeah, yeah. hey, why don't I open up your YouTube app and then I'll pull up Adventure Archives and I'll subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> like and uh comment and share and, and uh peter Sam asked if we're still recording the podcast and i said he can ask a question but he hasn't yet so maybe that will wait till the next time 
We are going to be bi-weekly with this mm-hmm. podcast. So whatever day of the week you're hearing this, because we haven't decided that yet, you will hear another episode two weeks later. Yes. It will have at least one of us on there. So like, but we promise that we will be out with a new podcast episode every two weeks on the same day at the same time. Oh, yeah. It might only be one person. Bi-weekly broadcasts. Oh, yeah. We we like alliteration. I think we've talked about that before. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Peter Som. Yeah. Peter Som. Oh, Peter Som. First Peter Som. question. Ever considered pickling wood sorrels? No, that is a great idea, though. I have considered pickling black walnuts, and then I got lazy, but I heard you can pickle them early in the spring when, like, the husk is still on, and you pickle the whole thing and apparently can eat it. Mm. Uh, second question. Your goal is $2 in Patreon donations per video. I think it means 2000 Can get things moving, correct? Correct. Um, in what ways? Well, so if we make 2000 per episode and then we're doing like maybe two episodes a month or something like that, that is getting to the point where we can actually do this full time. Um, this is like, okay. And let's be super clear about that. Yeah. Like we're talking about using that money <clears throat> to pay for our living expenses. Yeah. At the beginning, we've been using this money. Like we've used all of our YouTube ad revenue and all of mm-hmm. our Patreon stuff to pay for equipment. But at some point we would like to be able to use it to pay for a living and actually the, all the work that we put into mm-hmm. it. So like $2,000 a video, if we could do two episodes a month, then that's, after taxes, it's not that much. But I mean, that's close to like actually being able to survive on that yeah. type of money. It's yeah. like right now we do other stuff to fund our food and shelter. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, once we reach that point, I mean, it means more content for everybody, but it also means like getting to a point where we can grow it even more and then use like the growth of our channel to help other people out. I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't know, like survival Lily gave giving us a shout out, helped us so much. And I just want to be able to do that for other people too. Oh, speaking of which, um, so at the end here, I also want to give a shout out to Jana Priya Levine. Mm. He is a YouTuber musician. He has a Patreon page and he does amazing music. And he was actually featured on candy rat records once and um, I contacted him and I said, I would love to do a collaboration, feature some of your music, but you can see him at patreon.com slash Jana Priya. Mm-hmm. We'll have those in the show notes, but it's J-A-N-A-P-R-I-Y-A. And if you're on YouTube, there's probably a card in the corner you can click. Yeah, and he makes amazing music. Mm-hmm. Check him out, give him a subscribe, give him a like, comments on his videos, oh, yeah. that costs you nothing. Um, I'm actually one of his patrons. Um, but he makes awesome stuff and I just wanted to give him a shout out as well. Okay. Pete's got two more questions. One is if offered a contract to travel by discovery or, or any one of the like, not necessarily to make a living, but an opportunity for a year, would you take it? Um, yeah, I think it depends what it is. Cause we actually have been offered to like go on survival shows, but at the time we were just like not enough time, don't feel confident enough. And also just want to focus on working on the channel itself. Um, but obviously like, the national park foundation offered us this week long trip that we took, um, for the find your park expedition. And we did that. That was a contest by the way. Yeah. I, I think we should cause a lot of people think that we were endorsed. By yeah. Them people. Or sponsored by yeah. Them. The, the sponsors only sponsored the trip. We are not getting paid by any of these companies. So <laughs> well, yeah, that was yeah. just a, a contest that I saw on Twitter actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Andrew, you're entering this right now. <laughs> And then one more, if we have the time and would entertain it, have you browsed Reddit section in R No Sleep from Park Rangers? I've, I've browsed R No Sleep, and every time I close out because I want to sleep, or I, I just don't want to be scared. <laughs> but I didn't know there was like a Park Ranger theme. Um, that's oh, really wow, cool. Dude, I didn't know that either. But I get scared uh, so easily. <laughs> like, I, I'm not scared of the dark at all anymore. How old are you? I'm 24, almost 25. Okay, see, because I stopped being completely afraid of the dark, like, sometime after 25. Well, I... Like, to where being in the... No, no, no. I, I'm just letting you know that there's hope for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah because... no, 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 I know. I, I was going to say, I hope that happens to me, but... <laughs> because it's like, right now, you could turn off all the lights in this house right now, mm-hmm. and I would feel exactly the same as I do right now. Yeah, and I mean, I like, and I, I don't know what it is. I've gotten less scared of it, obviously, but when I'm in, out in the wilderness alone at night, like, there's still, man, it can be scary. <laughs> well, it, during our Smokies episode, I was actually like, I remember consciously looking around the environment and being like, okay, this is what it is, just gonna be the same at night. I wasn't that scared. I still was too scared to get up and pee though, <laughs> until other people showed up <laughs> at the campsite. <laughs> but I was surprisingly at Dude. peace. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's so funny. Remember when we went into Zaleski and we were walking in at night mm-hmm. and it was like, if you think that the other person's scared, you start yeah, to get scared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as long as you don't think the other person's scared, you're not scared. It's like you have to like mutually bolster each yeah, other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's weird how just being with one other person like completely changes things. Oh, it totally changes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not afraid of the dark, but if I were hiking alone at night, I would absolutely be scared. Yeah. I think that's like a, a fundamental part of your amygdala. Yeah, like yeah. It, it's, <laughs> it's hardwired yeah. to be scared in the dark, in the woods. And there's no shame in that. And that's, it's probably a very good <laughs> thing that your brain does that. <laughs> so in conclusion, I probably will not be browsing that section, at least not before a camping <laughs> trip. <laughs> but you'll have to tell me some good stories from that <laughs> wait do you do you still browse reddit occasionally not yeah because man like i don't go to reddit at all anymore i feel like it's the equivalent of mental junk food oh it absolutely is, is. <laughs> <laughs> like it just never makes me feel satisfied yeah. it's just like i can eat and eat and eat french fries and never get full and in the same way i can click these links i saw <laughs> bleed out i saw a great onion uh news line and it was fifth time (laughs) fifth time checking facebook feed in one minute finally pays off (laughs) (laughs) oh my god that is so perfect wow Uh, all right i think that wraps it up but yeah i think so thank you guys all so much again thank you all of our viewers all our patrons check out the episode you can watch it right now if you donate two dollars or more at patreon.com slash adventure thank you very much for listening